Hi there, Simon from SimonWoods.com. Uh, Portugal, red wines, yes. White wines? Well, I've done some Vina Verde in uh, a couple of videos recently, and uh, but I haven't got any Vina Verde here. I have got uh, one labelled Beiras, one labelled Dao, one labelled Adoro, and one labelled, is it Alentejo or Alentejano? Alentejo. Uh, what's the difference? We'll get onto that when we get to wine number four. But we might as well start with wine number one, because that's as good a place as any to start. And wine number one is Luz Pato, uh, Vino Regional Beiras. Beiras is uh, a region that's um, below the Douro Valley, above Lille. Lisbon, uh, main bits of it are down Bairada, but uh, this is probably all from the Bairada region, but uh, Luis Pato, uh, one of the top winemakers in, in Portugal, doesn't, uh, isn't a fan of the way they organise the uh, uh, denomination, so he labels it under the regional bit rather than the, uh, the more local bit. Anyway, 12% grapes, Cecil and Cecilino. Give it a whirl. Smells like it's going to be full flavoured, medium bodied. Um, and which is the way around, I like it rather than the other way around, full bodied, medium flavoured. Um, so there is um, an almost um, honeyed, minerally character that, that reminds me a bit of um, uh, maybe some, uh, some bits of Semillon in Australia, but not so much the uh, uh, Hunter Valley Semillon, not the Margaret River Semillon, but Barossa Semillon. Um, uh, and uh, it's 12% yeah, alcohol, so on the lighter side, but it, just, it feels like there's, there's a rounder, um, more ripe pear character that's, that's, uh, that's there in the middle. Uh, apples as well. Yeah, it smells like, like it's going to be good, clean and fresh. And there's this exotic musky character as well. Um, um, maybe bordering on things like guava and uh, uh, there's a, a touch of ginger maybe. And um, yeah, but this is freshness of fruit. feels quite weighty. The pear, the apple, the, yeah, the mineral. It's um, a really good um, uh, clean finishing wine. I, I do like that. Good drink. A lot of that, uh, but uh, I can't because I've got to do wine number two. Wine number two is a Boas Vinas a Branco uh, from the, the Dao region, um, and um, so grapes here are Encruzado and more of that one Cercial uh, that, that was in the one before. Now there's a pine resin-like smell that comes out of here. Uh, it almost smells like Retsina. Uh, it's got a, a touch of that pine uh, and then the citrus and peach behind. Um, intriguing and uh, I'm pretty sure that they won't put it uh, anywhere near any pine barrels or anything like that but it's probably the stuff that's in the air and um, uh, some oils have settled on the grapes and mm. when you taste it we're in Retsina the pine takes centre stage here it's this plush fruit um, uh, maybe peach pear apple um, and then something something richer getting into that um, um, maybe the, some of the passion fruit that's in there, and then the pine is sort of out, out there uh, on the edges, not not playing a major part, but just uh, content, to, content to play second or third fiddle. Um, maybe if I've got a problem with it, uh, I'd like a little bit more freshness and zing on the finish. So that I got that on the first one. Um, uh, uh, here you get rounded, rich flavour, and then just, and it doesn't actually tail off in terms of flavour, but uh, your mouth's left feeling just slightly, um, yeah, it's, it feels a bit flabby. Like it, like the flavours, but would like a crisper finish. Let's see how we get on in the Douro. Uh, so this is Vigna de Urze, U-R-Z-E, and it's from the cork, tells me it's made by Khan. Um, and so it's Marks and Spencers, uh, they've done it for Marks and Spencers, and it's the Douro. Interesting that this is 2008 vintage. Uh, old vines, um, and um, what does that mean, old vines? Well, the problem is, if you're in the Douro Valley, uh, when you're uh, trying to work out what goes into, uh, um, it, it, what, what makeup is it your wine is, is it 20% this, 30% that, you're presented with this vineyard, which over the course of several generations, someone's planted something, and they planted another bit here, and some bits have been re replanted. And you get these uh, these vineyards, which uh, can uh, well in red in, in, on red wines, they can have uh, as many 35, 40 different grape varieties. Uh, and uh, so they, they just put old vine blend or field blend on some of them. Uh, this is the equivalent for the white. The light herb and mineral character. Um, Fruit-wise, it's so uh, what people call stone fruits. Not that maybe the peach. It's on something that's a bit fine and nectarine, apricot. Um, and uh, yeah, it feels like it's going to be quite precise. Alcohol is um, 12.5%. Um, com I think they, they went 12, 13, 12 and a half. But I thought I'd do this here because it's 2008. 
and that mineral character carries on when you taste it but um, problem is it's um, I, I'm not sure whether they, they, whether they should have sent 2008 vintage it feels like uh, uh, the wine is, is a bit tired it's lost its perkiness there's still a little touch of that uh, apricot uh, uh, and peach fruit but um, yeah it's lost it's lost it's lo lost the spice uh, it's lost the spikiness and uh, I want a little bit more perky flavor reserving judgment because uh, I yeah I think I should have had a younger one there. Final one, Quinta do Quetzal, uh, Reserva Alentejo, uh, and uh, grape here as Antal Vaz, uh, and if, they'd, if they hadn't used the grapes that would be permitted for the Alentejo DOC, they would have labelled it um, Vino Original Alentejano, which I was referring to earlier. Well, one of the things it says on the back is Fermentado en Barricas Novas de Carvalho Francés Americano, so fermented in French and American oak, and that's the character that you get dominating the wine. Smoky, toasty, uh, rather pungent, um, yeah, a slightly excessive oak for me. Um, I did a video recently um, and in which I did um, uh, a, vino re a Vino Real uh, Rioja, re uh, re I can't remember what it was, Reserva, but the, the white Rioja from Vino Real, and I was saying much the same thing. I wish they'd have done a little less uh, oak. This is a year older than that was, and if the oak's still poking out now, uh, I'm a bit concerned about it. It may be that um, it's just been opened and the oak will diminish and the wine will come to the fore as it, uh, as it uh, expands, but um, for the moment oak is um, a bit too dominant. And I like those lemony coconut um, characters, but that sweet vanilla from the oak is just punching it and push, pushing it too much and uh, yeah, just a bit over the top for me. Um, I wish that there was, um, yeah, it would be really good to compare it with an, an, an oaked version of that, of that wine because uh, I think of Antal Vaz as being uh, a grape that's quite a little, got a little bit of freshness and aroma. And here, uh, beneath all that oak, it gets rather uh, rather buried, which is a shame. Favourite, Luis Pato, uh, and, um, but that's what Portugal can do. Uh, and uh, it can do far more than besides, the, besides these ones, but um, uh, I enjoyed the Luis Pato and I think that's the one I'm going to have a glass of now. See you soon.